healing for miracle signs and wonders. Yes. And we just let the glory of God fall in our midst. God, if, if we're not, if we're here for any other reason, then we're here for the wrong reason. Yes, thank you. We just want the Holy Ghost to show up. Praise precious God, we praise you. We honor you in this place. Jesus, we lift up your name. We lift up your name. Lift up your head, so ye gates, ye everlasting doors, and be ye ever lifted up, and the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? He's the Lord, strong and mighty. He's the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your head, ye everlasting doors, and he will come in. That's a promise. He will come in. We are those gateways. We are those doorways for the Holy Spirit to enter in. To enter into our midst. He is in us. He goes before us. He's upon us. And his precious glory is our real God. And where we go, he goes. If we'll just let him. Let him be free to do what he wants to do. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your sweet presence this morning, Jesus. Thank you for your sweet presence this morning, Jesus. King Jesus. We lift you up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Oh, goodness gracious. Y'all can be seated. When I put the music together last night, uh, Cheryl usually does, but I need this time. And just in a, a worship, a place of worship, there's a time to praise and to laugh and to dance and but for some reason, my heart was just in a place of worship last night, and uh, that, that, that's, that's what I came to do. Thank I want to worship Him. Yes. Y'all, if we're doing anything less, we're just playing church, and we don't right. need to do that. Mm -hmm. We need to accomplish something when we come here, and accomplish something when we walk, we walk out those doors. Amen. Praise God. I want to read something to you. I found this in a devotional. It's by Brother uh, Kenneth Copeland, and uh, I found this several days ago and had it printed out and saw it last night when I was getting ready to come. And it's called the Covenant of Love. For God so loved the world that he gave. And he gave. And he gave. And he gave. And he, and he gives. And he gives. And he gives. He just keeps on giving. He wants to give to us much more than we can even realize. Above and beyond all we can ask for things. For God so loved the world that he gave, and he gave, and he gave. This is the message the Bible brings us from beginning to end. And it sounds simple enough, yet few of us can really, really comprehend it. When we have that breakthrough and understand the love of God, the comprehension of the love of God, there's a verse over in um, Ephesians, and it says um, that he'll bless us exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Well, if there is a power available to us that's working in us, available to work in us, don't you want to know what that power is? Oh, yes. Yes. The Lord revealed to me in 2010, as you read that, that's the ending of a prayer that Paul prayed for the people. And he prayed for them to know the length and the depth and the breadth and the height of his love that we may comprehend yes. the length and the depth and the breadth and the height. Comprehend yes. the depth of his love. Y'all, yes. that's the power yes. that's working in us. When we get revelation and comprehend the depth of the love that God has for yes. us, yes. That, that's life-changing. Right. That's a life-changing experience. And I'm sure we've all experienced that. And we can experience experience it more than once. That's the power that's working in us to bring us exceeding abundantly above all we can even ask or think. God wants to bless us more than uh, than we want it. That's right. Amen. <laughs> and we want it pretty bad, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, this is the message that the Bible brings us from beginning to end. And it sounds simple enough, yet few of us really comprehend it. We can understand the idea of a God power. We can understand a God who desires to be served. But an almighty God who loves us so much that he desires above all 
to give to us. Mm -hmm. Now see, that's hard, to, that's hard to believe. That's where that comprehension has to come through. Right. For thousands of years, God has been working to drop the revelation of his love into the hearts of men. He's, been, he's made loving promises and blessings and protections, but he, but he always faces the same obstacle. Human beings who just could not bring themselves to believe that those promises are really true. Everybody lift your hands up right now. Say, I believe it. I believe it. Jesus is. Jesus is. Absolutely. Absolutely. In love. In love. With me. With me. 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 Yeah. Amen. He wasn't accustomed to the idea of a God who gives. After all, he had grown up as a worshiper of the moon, and the moon had certainly never seemed to be interested in doing anything for Abram. Yeah. Then he encountered El Shaddai, yeah. the more than enough God, the greatest being of all, the one almighty God. And the first thing that El Shaddai wanted to do was give to him. And God's promises so astounded Abram that he just couldn't believe it. It was from the Lord. And he said, Lord, how can I know that I'm really going to receive these things? Do you know what God answered him or how he answered him? By cutting a blood covenant with him. He cut a blood covenant with Abram. And he himself came and yes. walked through the blood. God himself came to me. And walk through the blood and cut that blood cover covenant with Abel. Well, you know what? We have even a greater covenant, don't we? That's right. God took on flesh once yes, again. He and he came into this earth as the man Jesus. I said once again, the Spirit of God walked through the first time. But he took on flesh as a man in the man Jesus, took on the name Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And he took a cross for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So he's cut a covenant with us Absolutely. as well. Yes. We have that same covenant. We hear a lot about love and we've almost gotten desensitized to it. Yeah. About walking in love. Love is not, not envious and it's not jealous and it doesn't take offense and all this. We, we, we know that and we hear that and we, we believe that. But do we really comprehend it? Have we been, de been de desensitized to the love of God to the point that we're not really recognizing and walking in it anymore? That's easy to do. It's easy to get distracted. But God himself cut another covenant with us. And it's even a better covenant than what Abram has. Think of Abram's. He said, I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm going to multiply the seeds of the earth, the stars of the sky, so shall your seed be. Listen, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. <laughs> but somehow he's made it better than that, didn't he? Because we have a new and better covenant. And you know, he cut it with Jesus. He cut it with himself. So we can even mess it up. <laughs> there's nothing you can do. You can't fall far down enough. And there's not enough bad you can do to even mess up that covenant. It's a sure covenant. It's a sure word. It's a more sure covenant. And that's the word of God. That's his blood, his name, his, the Holy Ghost, his power. Let's see, we got the blood, we got the name. What we got? It's a three-chord thing. We got the blood, the most powerful agent in, in, the, in the universe. We've got the name that, that, that brings, and the blood. The, the word, the, the, uh, I'll get this here in a minute. <laughs> I've got a whole thing on this, and I'm going to get it. We've got the blood. Yes. That, that, that ridiculous. We've got the name. We walk in the authority. And we've got his word, the more sure covenant that never changes. Praise God. Now, isn't that, is that a good message? That's a good message today. Isn't it? Walking in the love of God. And the spirit of faith will proclaim the outcome right in the middle of adversity. And it'll stand up in the face of opposition and it will announce how this is going to turn out. Because the enemy's already defeated. It sees the situation and the difficulty, but it knows it ain't over yet. Before it's over, it announces exactly how it's going to turn out. It speaks the outcome before the outcome even arrives. It's going to turn out with me being the head and not the tail. Right. I'm going to be above, yeah, not beneath. Right. I'm going to be blessed coming in and going out. Right. And everything I set my hands to do is going to be blessed. In the basket and in the store.
for the sitting in the field. That's right. He's got yeah. hidden treasures for me, not yeah. from me. Yeah. He's got hidden treasures for my yeah. Praise yeah. God. Praise yeah. God. Praise yeah. God. And how do I find those? By getting into his presence. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit will reveal those to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. The There's a breaking in my faith. Yes. Yeah. There's a shifting in my oh, faith. Yeah. Whatever you're going through today, it's going to be better tomorrow. I promise you. If when we get into his spirit, when we get into his presence, we win. We win. Praise God. That's victory. That's victory. And I just want to rejoice in it. I'm in a, I'm in a mood today. I just want to get on my face and just worship. God is so good to us. And we get so distracted. And we get so crazy about so many things. I can hear him saying to me so many times, Martha, Martha, you're so concerned about so many things. You're just troubled about so many things. And I have to stop and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. You're the one who multiplied those loaves. You're the one who fed the people. I don't have to do that. I just have to show up and let him work through me. Speak his, be his voice. Be his, be his voice. We are him in this earth. God gave me a word at the beginning of 2018. It's a bold word. I am the move of God. Everybody say that. I am the move of God. I am. Because if I don't do it, who's going to do it in the earth? See, that's not a we word. That's a me word. And if you get bold enough to say that and think, okay, I may be the only intervention to that person closest to hell today. I may not feel like I have anything to give, but what I've got, that man closest to hell, be salvation for him. Amen. Think about that. That's who we are. That's who he made us to be in this earth. That's powerful, isn't it? Smith Wigglesworth used to pray every morning when he got up, Father, send me to the persons closest to hell today. Yeah. Because he had a good word for him. He had the gospel. The yeah. gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is enough to snatch anybody That's right out of the, the fires of hell. Because this thing is real. We're about to have an awakening that's coming into this earth. We're about to have a harvest. And what we're doing here, we're setting our table. We're setting this harvest table. Amen. We're not just going to feed people. We're going to have a feast. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to feast out in here. Yeah. Praise God. Well, you glad you came? Yeah. Hey, I'm glad I came, Lord. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I got another little thing here. But listen, I want to welcome y'all. I just want to say thank you so much for taking your time and being here with us this morning. And uh, we did have a parking situation, and uh, but that's okay. We all made it, didn't we? Yeah. Praise the Lord, and I'm so glad you're here. I do want to remind you real quick, the hostess book back here at our hostess table, uh, Jean's got it all set up back there, so pretty, and she's got some beautiful welcome cards and a nice little gift for you. And uh, so please sign up at the hostess table. Let us know that you came. Give us your, some information about you. We won't bog you. We won't drive you crazy, but we do want to send you a couple of things, okay? And they'll be through the mail, all right? Uh, and I want you to pay attention to the newsletters back there, too. We have them from every month, and we collect them. We have good, good teaching in those newsletters. We have good articles, just good, warm articles that just that be great devotionals for you. We have praise and worship in those. And uh, uh, we also have something uh, this month. It's about a prayer initiative that we're doing in our area. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in just a minute. And uh, uh, let you know the speakers that's going to be coming and everything. Now, our mandates for a Glow International, they were three, but they've been streamed into one. And it's the biggest one establishing the kingdom of God. Praise God. How many is happy to be a part of that? Yes. Woo, yes. what an honor to work in the harvest fields for Almighty God. What an honor to establish him, use me, to establish the kingdom of God. Think about that. And not only that, we are partakers of all the goodness that he's got. Hallelujah. Well, we're doing that work. Uh, we're going to be like Ruth. We're going to glean the fields and then we're going to own them. Yeah. <laughs> but see, here's the deal. We already own them. Yeah, we already right. own them in here. Okay. Now, we 
have a global partnership, and that is $40 a year, and it renews every year on your anniversary day. It affords you different things in a glow. If you want to serve and be a part of, of a glow and be a part of the ministry of it, you can let us know. It gives you discounts and things like that when you go to conferences and for uh, different um, um, uh, items that you might want to purchase or whatever. So if you decide to want to be a, a, a global partner, check with Jean back there at the hostess table. She'll give you the information on it and let you know. Uh, we're having a regional conference. And it's March 29 and 30. It's in Birmingham, Alabama. So we are just about to head out down there next week, actually. And we are having our uh, very own Jane Hanson Hoyt, who is the president and the CEO of the Globe International. And we I've never heard her speak live. I've got CDs and things like that, but I've never heard her live. So it's going to be a powerful weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I really am. And um, then our uh, regional director, um, Glenda Fleming, she'll be here as well, as long with, along with others. But anyway, if you'd like to go, get in touch with one of our team members. I'm going to introduce them here in just a minute, and uh, they'll let you know. I'll give you more information on that. Now, uh, we're going to, uh, okay, let me go ahead and finish this up. Uh, let me introduce the team. Uh, Kim, would you stand up? This is Kim Castle. She is our Vice President of Administration. And Jean Zuby, she is Vice President of Publications, Public Relations, Public Relations. We have Micah Allen. Micah is, Micah is my son and my cell and our cell man. I've been praying for a cell man, realized that I had one right in my own house. So he's the music man here. And then we have Cheryl Elliott, she's our praise and worship uh, leader. And then we have Miss Wanda Collins, she is our new prayer chair. Everybody's just doing a great job. Uh, the prayer initiative, let me go over that real quick. This is something new that we're doing, and this is going to be going on over all of the nation through the globe. And we, as Tennessee, um, we have our portion and our part to play in this. And so what we're doing, each lighthouse in each area, they're coming together with their prayer chairs and their presidents, and then anybody else who is interested in joining this team. And what they're asking us to do is to go to the doorways and the gateways of our cities, our areas, pray over those places. For instance, right here in Nashville, take a look at what we have in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville is a hot spot. A flame is about to take off in this place. Matter of fact, I think that flame took off last year when Michael W. Smith did that, um, that meeting in Nashville. I think that flame was kindled that night. People are on fire right now. And we're about to see this thing explode. Yeah. And I, I saw a prophetic word, and it's, it's supposed to start in Nashville. Um, let me tell you that real quick. It was a prophetic word about the move of God coming across the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And this man was from North Carolina. And he said what, what he saw, what the Lord showed him, when he looked down at the map of uh, Tennessee, he said it, he got the impression it looked like a handgun. With East Tennessee being the barrel of that gun. Well, when I heard that and I read that and I was reading over it and I thought, okay, if East Tennessee is the barrel of the gun, he said that, that the winds were blowing from the west to the east. That made the east look like the barrel of that gun. And I looked at that and I thought, if East Tennessee is the, the barrel of the gun, West Tennessee would be the handle. Well, what would that make Middle Tennessee? What's in the middle of a gun? Uh, say it loud. Trigger. A trigger. <laughs> That's who we are, man. It's, it's starting right here. It's starting right here. That flame is starting out right here. We're pulling that trigger, and we're doing this, and we're as much a part of the move of God. Now, it's not just a glow. It's not just a glow. We have Belmont Church over here. They're meeting this morning. There's a ladies group right next to us. Holy Ghost busy out here this morning. Yeah. So, see, yeah. you, take, you take this what we're saying, and take it back to your church. Take it back to your friends and your family. Share these things with them. And then we all look expectantly to yeah. see what God is going to do. Right. To see what God is going to do. And let that flame start in us. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? Everybody got one of these on your chair. We're going to uh, declare this. Talking about the flames being in us, let's declare this this morning. 
This is also an I word. Uh, Father, I present myself. This is also an I word. Uh, make it personal. When I say that, not a we word, it's a me word. What I mean is take that very personal. Make that personal to you. Father, just say this with me. Father, I present myself to your kingdom purpose. Here I am. Send me. Set a call to my lips that I will speak what you would have me say. Let the fire that is shut up in my bones be so great that I cannot help but speak and do all that you would have me say and do. Let me be the one who fans the flame of your spirit across this great land of America and beyond to bring in your harvest. You have raised me up together with Christ Jesus, and I am seated with him. You've given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And I am stepping into the very area that hell has fought to keep me out of for so long. We're here. We've arrived. I not only occupy, but I own it. And you've given me boldness, you've given me confidence, and your anointing is on your word. You have fully equipped me for service, for I am the move of God in the earth. Miracles and signs and wonders will follow as we go forth by your spirit with your word. And your righteousness goes before us, and your glory, O oh God, is our prayer God. Amen. We're fully on Jesus. Amen. Okay, everybody, it's offering time. Yeah. <laughs> See, God even gives us an opportunity to sow and to reap. Anybody believe in the seed time and harvest? Yeah. Man, I'm a firm believer. It's how I live. Praise God. Mark 4, uh, Mark chapter 4, start with verse 23. It says, if any man has ears to hear, oh, let's let him hear. Open up those spiritual ears. And he, Jesus, said unto them, to them, Take heed what you hear, and with what measure you meet, it shall be given, measured back to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. And then he said, listen to this, So is the kingdom of God. He's telling us how it works. He's giving us a key to work that kingdom and make it work for us. God's word works if we work his work. So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and then he's going to sleep and rise, sleep and rise, sleep and rise. How many times he's going to do that? We don't know, but the seed is in the ground. Yeah. And in the meantime, he is speaking forth to that, to that fruit, to that seed that he's sown in that earth. He's speaking the word over it. He's watering it with the spirit of God. He's keeping the weeds tilled out of that garden. There's not a farmer alive that doesn't sow a seed who does not expect to get a return on that seed. Some of them even put the packages on the ends of the row, and when you go and all you see is a little green plant, and they'll want to brag on their garden, oh, there's my tomatoes. Well, I don't see any tomatoes. I just see a little green plant. There's my corn over here. So that's what we have to do. When we sow, we're not throwing money into a bucket. Here at a glow in Nashville, any of them I have ever had anything to do with. Well, we all do. Um, when we sell, we pray over everything that's given in this ministry. Your money is held, and we pray over Amen. that money. Amen. And we speak the 30, 60, 90, 100 fold blessing over your life. We do that, and we call that forth in your life. So while we're doing that, y'all be doing the same. Hold it up to the Father, Lord, I've given. And your word says that if I give, it will be given back to me in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men will come and give into my bosom. And I fully expect your word to do and accomplish in my life what you said it would. Praise God. But for the, um, and so we should sleep and arise night and day. And the seed should spring up. Now we don't know how. It just does it. For the ear brings forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that, then the full corn in the ear. Think of what a corn seed will do. Think of what a corn seed, how it multiplies. Mm -hmm. See, God's not a, just, uh, he does, he's not an addition. He's in a multiplication. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
And if God asks you for something, he's not trying to get anything from you. Oh. He's trying to get something to you. Yes. Yes. But you have to sow the seed. Mm -hmm. Your future is in your seed. Yes. Praise God. And when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle because then the harvest comes. And we all love harvest time, don't we? Amen. Praise God. Amen. So as y'all give, uh, we're going to pass an offering bucket. And you've also got a prayer request there. If you'll fill out your prayer request, Wanda Conley, she's going to be taking those up for you. And so uh, Kim's uh, taking up the offering. And, and Wanda, if you come up here and stand, honey. If you have any prayer requests, uh, Wanda will come and get that. And I have one, Wanda. Wanda is a, an intercessor, and I'm telling you what, she gets in her closet and prays. She prayed for me the other day, and boy, she sent me back some word, powerful word. Situations, just pray over the prayer request and pray for our president. Yes. Would you do that? Yes. 